Hello, brothers and sisters. I am Albert Oler. Um, I've been called to serve in the Ben and Kunhu mission. If you don't know where that is, don't worry about it. Uh, I had no idea until like the second day after I opened the call. Um, turns out it's in Africa, simply put. It's uh, West Africa, just west of Nigeria. It's two little countries. One of them is Benin, which is the name of my mission, and the other one is Togo. Two, right, two little countries right next to each other. They're both super small. That's just my whole mission. Um, how I came upon my topic, uh, the reason you come upon me, and there's a heading that really stood out to me. It was how conversion to Jesus Christ leads to unity and happiness. And immediately after I read that, uh, an experience popped up in my head that I had when I was in MTC, still in, but just in like the third day. Um, before I get into that, just a little background you need to know for this. So my MTC schedule isn't like some other missionary. So some of my friends who have gone through MTC already had a schedule where they had classes that were the same time every day. Um, but for me, my classes, the times my classes would change depending on the day. And so this specific day, my classes started early in the morning and ended at six at night. So my day went something like this. So I woke up at 6.30, just like all missionaries do. Went, worked out, came back, took a shower, hopped on my class, got back at 7.45, started at 8. Perfect, almost a little late, but I was on time, thankfully. Um, right after that, so it was at 8 o'clock, so my first class was. Right after that, my class started at 9, then 9, 12 was my class. And in between this little gap from 12 to 3, from the next class starts, uh, we didn't finish the study, and then hopped on at 3 for my next class. And in the middle of that next class, Three, two, six class. Um, I was sitting there and I was like, man, this is gonna be the longest six weeks of my life. I can't do this. This is just, I, this is so hard. I'm gonna be able to do this. Like, I'm so tired. I want to sleep. I want to go to the bathroom. I want to drink some water. I want to eat some food. Couldn't do any of that. Couldn't leave my class. <laughs> um, then my teacher just says, all right, so we're gonna read some scriptures. We're gonna read Second Nephi chapter 31. First thought that ran through my head was just great. We have more scriptures. I love sitting there reading all day. <laughs> so like, no. We're reading through, and this scripture, I was reading through it, and it was my turn to read, and I read the scripture out loud, and it changed the whole way of being MTC. Um, and the scripture is 2 Nephi chapter 31, verse 20, and it says, Wherefore, ye must press forward with the steadfastness of Christ, having the perfect brightness of hope, and the love of God, and of all men. Wherefore, if ye, if ye shall press forward, feasting upon the word of Christ, and endure to the end, Behold, thus saith the Father, and ye shall have eternal life. And the way I view this is kind of in two ways. So there's two parts in the scripture. And the first part is, if ye shall press forward, feasting upon the word of Christ, and endure to the end. And then the second part is, ye shall have eternal life. And this just changed the whole way I viewed MTC. And it fits in perfectly, I feel, with my talk, because one way I viewed was, if we convert ourselves to Christ, if we become more converted to Christ, it will lead us to unity and happiness. Just how if we press forward and endure to the end, we shall have eternal life. This just changed the whole way I view everything in the MTC. It changed it from how oh, this is such a grind, how I'm gonna do this to if I keep working, I keep grinding, keep going forward, I'll be a more effective and good missionary. And if I keep coming closer to Christ, then I will be happy and I will be better off and I'll be able to better teach these people. Um that was really quick, but uh <laughs> I'm just gonna end with my testimony. Um, I know that the power of prayer is real. I know that if we ask for something, we will receive it. It may not be always in the way that we expect it or when we get it, but just how when I was struggling in MTC and that scripture came on me, it was there for me at the right time that God had put it there and had been able to make me want to be a better missionary and keep going forward and persevere. Um, I know that no matter where I go, whether I actually do make it to Benin, or if I'm going to be in the States, that uh, I will be able to be an effective missionary if I keep going forward and pressing forward and persevering. I know that if I just work hard, that I will be there and I'll be good and I'll be an effective missionary. Um, I know that Joe Smith is a true prophet, the Book of Mormon is the word of God, and they say the same thing in Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.
we found one person that was interested in our message, but they never ended up wanting to hear it. And that was for nine weeks. And we were teaching one person, and halfway through that time, he decided he did not want to meet with us anymore. And after that first transfer, the same thing happened. I had a new companion, I had new companions. We would wander the streets. This time we decided we got up the courage to go outside, but still with no faith. Um, to give you a little bit of background, actually, I gained a little bit of weight in my second transfer, and so I would be like going down the street, and this happened twice actually. People would call me Pangy on the street. Pangy means stout. They would just be like, hey, Pangy, and it's a complete stranger. I'm like, dude, we don't even know each other. Like, you can't call me Pangy, you can't call me stout. But like, the people there, they just kind of have no chill. And so we'd be like going down the street, and we'd be talking to people, but having a complete lack of faith. And that's what we got for transfers, for week after week, for transfer after transfer. We found no success. We were not, we did not have the faith. Honestly, we did not take it upon ourselves to the name of Christ. Um, but later in my mission, our, we had a new mission president. My old mission president, President Tudek, he was Polish. I love that man a lot. He's done a lot for me on my mission. Um, but we got a new mission president. His name is President, uh, president Chan. Um, and he is from America. And he came in and he invited us to repent, to truly take upon ourselves the name of Christ. And what he invited us to do, he invited us to read the Book of Mormon in 40 days. And then he invited us to repent of our lack of faith. It was kind of gross and us, it was great. Uh, he invited us to repent of our lack of faith and then go out with that faith to find people to teach. And this changed our mission a lot. We ended up having a lot of success. And I would also like to focus for a second on an experience that really impacted me. Um, when he invited us to repent, to read the Book of Mormon, what I did is I started from the beginning along with all my other fellow missionaries. Um, and I remember I started from the beginning of the Book of Mormon and I got to the Book of Enos. And one day I was reading the Book of Enos in my apartment with my companion. It was the summer I was living in a really nice apartment, a really nice city. And we were sitting there, and I was sitting on this weird, like, futon bed thing that, like, unfolds into a couch, but, like, it's a little bit enough. Anyway, but I was sitting on this weird bed thing, um, doing, just reading the Book of Enos. I read a verse in there. I was reading from this copy of the Book of Mormon, actually. And it's when Enos says that his soul hungered when he wanted to know the love of God. And when I read that, I felt something that was completely different. I felt my soul hunger. I've never felt that before. It felt really weird. My soul hunger to know that the Book of Mormon was the Word of God. So I knelt down next to this weird couch bed thing in this apartment just in the afternoon. And I offered a prayer to God. I asked Him for another witness for me personally that the Book of Mormon is the Word of God. And nothing happened. Really weird. After a minute, I received an answer in a very special, personal way for me. And that experience changed my life. It changed my mission. And it gave me the faith to go outside and talk to people, to go outside and have the faith that people will accept our message. And this wasn't a change that happened immediately. Um, it changed my attitude, but I did, as a missionary, and we as a mission do get super good at it. After some time, us going out on the street, we were able to find a lot of success. We finally took our took upon ourselves the name of Christ. Now I'd kind of like to compare this change that I saw in myself and in this mission that we thought was impossible to what we what we read in Come Follow Me this week. Specifically in 4 Levi, we read about people that has taken upon themselves the name of Christ. These people have been taught by Christ and they see the blessings that come from. Uh, in verse 15 of 4 Nephi, it says, And it came to pass that there was no contention in the land, because of the love of God which did dwell in the hearts of the people. And there were no envyings, no strifes, no tumults, nor whoredoms, nor lines, nor, mur nor murders, nor any matter manner of lasciviousness. And surely there could not have been a happier people among all the people who had been created by the hand of God. And jump into verse 18. And how blessed were they for the Lord did bless them in all their doings. And I saw this change in myself in 
this mission. As we went outside and we talked to people with faith, um, we found incredible, incredible success. Literally, we found 800% more people to teach than our mission ever has in the past. We have almost, now we have double the amount of baptisms that we ever have in the past. Because we have this faith to go and to find people. And I would like to compare this experience to Fort Luthor when they say that there could not have been a happier people among all the people who have been created by the hand of God. How blessed were they for the, for the Lord that blessed them in all their doings. I know how much I've been blessed. I know how much this mission has been blessed. And I know that none of this is thanks to my own efforts. This is all thanks to the efforts of the Lord. And I honestly cannot express my gratitude for these wonderful experiences, these life-changing experiences that will stay with me my entire life. And I know that when we take upon ourselves the name of Christ, just like these people fourth book of Nephi, just like these people who have been taught by Christ, if we take upon ourselves the name of Christ, we will always be blessed, and we can always be happy. And I know that, and I can promise each one of you that, because I have experienced that for myself. And it is truly amazing to see. One of my favorite verses in the Book of Mormon um, was shared by my mission president's wife. Um, she, and it's in Alma chapter 26, verses 1 and 2. Um, and this is when the sons of Mosiah, after their missions, um, they, they come together and they, and it is written, and now these are the words of Ammon to his brethren, which say thus, my brothers and my brethren, behold I say unto you, how great reason have we to rejoice. For could we have supposed when we started from the land of Zarahemla that God would have granted unto us such great blessings? And now I ask, what blessings, has he what blessings has he bestowed upon us? Can you tell? I really like when Ammon says here, when we started from the land of Zarahemla, um, wait, I'm sorry, for could we have supposed when we started from the land of Zarahemla that God would have granted unto us such great blessings? I could not have supposed the blessings that we were blessed with. And I know that none of us can comprehend and imagine the blessings that come when we take upon ourselves the name of Christ, when we act in this way, when we truly give all that we have, like Elder Morrison said, when we give all that we have, holding back nothing to know Jesus Christ. I've experienced this so many times, and I know that even now, after my mission, even though my mission is over, I still experience the love of Jesus Christ every day. I know that whenever I pray, whenever I read the scriptures, I become a better disciple of Jesus Christ. And I have had, despite being home from my mission, I have had incredible spiritual experiences. And I know that today is the day that I know Christ better than any other day. I know that he is my Savior. And I know that for each one of us that can be the case. That every day, that day can be the day that we know Christ better than ever before. So I would invite you all, if you want, to ask yourself that question at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day. Is today the day that I know Christ better than any other day? Because we can go close to him every day. I know that Christ is the Savior of the world. Not only is he my Savior, but he is the Savior of every one of us. I have felt his love so many times. He blesses me, and he blesses all of us so much. He blesses my family. Blessed Jack, even. It's amazing, amazing <laughs> to see. And I'm so grateful for his influence in my life, for everything that I have experienced thanks to him. And I'm so grateful that I've been able to serve people all of And that now I can continue to serve all of you. And that I can always be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Um, my mom really wants me to bear my testimony in Polish, so I'll do that with poetry. Jesus, <laughs> 
Fiatis Nava Roshkiacha Tufa Majesa. Es en fact que se han hecho en el mundo de los chinos, 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 